Marcos, Marcos, before you start training, uh, give me a minute. It's really not a good time now, Harold. We need to start training for the new season. Marcos, Marcos, one minute with the players. Uh, I must, I must speak to them. Okay, go ahead. Hello, my name is Herr Rolf. Uh, welcome, all you old players and the new players. Oh, many, many new players, I see. I want you to know that for the next season, we are not going to get relegated. We are not going to be in the relegating zone. We are not going to be in the middle of the table. We are going up. We are going up to the Bundesliga. <laughs> Oh my god, Herr Rolf, what have you told the players? They came to me thinking that we are going up to the Bundesliga. Yes, yes, Marcos, we are going to the Bundesliga. But how are we going to do that? Without money, without a squad ready for the Bundesliga, with the tactics that's taken from the East Germany 80s, this is not going to work. What do you mean, not going to work? If you want me to pose a real threat for us to go up, you need to give me a chance to create a tactics for myself. Tactics for yourself? Yes, I need to get a chance to prove to you that I can do this. Okay, on one condition. You keep the 442. I want our tactic to look like an IKEA tactic. A flat package on top of a flat package on top of a sound flat package. Are you serious? I'm always serious. Okay, you'll get your way. A 442, but it's going to be my way. Okay, but we must get promoted. I can't promise you anything. We must get promoted. We will see. Bye, Herr Rolf. We must get promoted. Hello and welcome, Michelinia FM welcomes you to the great FM20 adventure that is Swedish Mafia, where we try to take Hansa Rostock back to the Bundesliga, and we are doing it with a bit of a Swedish twist. After that motivational speech from Herr Rolf, it becomes obvious that this is not a season for a relegation battle or a mid-table clash. It is a season to look up the table towards the promotion spots. And you know what? I actually think we might have a squad to do it. That's a bit remarkable considering we only had nine players going into this off-season. But we did a good job in the transfer market and I'm going to show you the squad. I felt like I didn't really give you a good squad run through the last time. So here we go. This is the squad we have at our disposal at the moment. Goalkeepers are Frank Dannenberg who is an own product promoted from the youth we are loaning Gavin Bazunu from Man City I think this is a decent goalkeeping pair Bazunu the obvious number one but Dannenberg could play the occasional game uh, and uh, the goalkeeping position was a worry last season I feel like it's less of a worry this season Gajarlov is still here as a central defender but now he's not an important player anymore he's more of a backup option as well Sven Sonnenberg, he was here last season too. Joseph Baffo, he is perhaps a starting player, perhaps not, because we have brought in a few decent players. This guy, Andy Coburn, came in on loan from Everton. He is 18 years old, but he looks decent. Got a nice IKEA rating as well. Bjorn Paulsen, Danish. He looks good, he looks fierce. Nice bravery, nice determination, nice heading to him. 190 centimetres tall. So, five decent central defender options. And when we look at the wing backs, they look good as well. Out on the left, we have Kilian Jakob on loan. Deji Bayreuter, who is obviously the number one. Look at that nice first touch, nice agility, nice crossing. You can run with the ball, run without it. 
And then we have Niklas Landgraf, who is a pure backup option. As right backs, we have Alexander Jallo, Swede, decent, kind of unexciting. But we also have Pedro Moraes, 21 year old Portuguese from Stuttgart. Lovely crossing, decent at running, nice passing, good tackling. So that's the defenders. If we go and look at the midfield, I think the depth and quality is similar. Uh, as central midfielders, we still have Kevin Walker. Nice box-to-box -box player. I think he can last through this season, even though he's 32 years old. Philip Haglund is versatile, but not very good. He is sort of at the bottom of the picks, but he's there for us if we need a backup option. He can go as a backup option for central defender, central midfielder, and even forward if we need then we have Anders Bort, he has the absolutely best set of hair I've seen so far and that is the main reason he is with this team. Uh, well, I guess that's a reason as good as anyone. We have new signing Alex Blazer, who we managed to steal away from under the noses of Man United and other big European clubs. I have high hopes for this guy, I hope that he will continue to develop into a lovely deep lying playmaker. Passing 13, Vision 13. Nice first touch of 14. Uh, okay, physicals. Hopefully we can improve them a bit. He's not a small lad. Uh, if we can make him a bit stronger, that would be lovely. Then we have a couple of uh, backup options as well. Julian Achten, known player for us. Lacks a bit of determination, but has a few interesting attributes. Nice first touch and technique. Vision, could work a bit on his passing. And then we have Bulan Zeza, 17 year old who we recently signed. Yeah, he was cheap. He's not close to playing. Out on the left, we can have Amal Mujanic. He is actually a right footed player. I'll get back to that a little later. On the right, we have Torsten Vogel, own product. Okay ish. Niki Omladic, left footed little magician. I hope that he can step up. He had a bit of a disappointing season last season after a terrific first season. Aymar Scher, another Swede we've learned. Right winger, nice dribbling, nice first touch. He's quick and pacey. Decent work rate too. And then we have the strikers. This guy. We can talk about this guy all day long. Those mentors are absolutely fantastic. He is the daddy of the team and hopefully he can lift a couple of these players because if we are going to try to get involved in a promotion race, we will need to lean on him. And we will need to lean on this guy, Usman Mane. Look at him. He has goals in his eyes. He has goals in his heart. He dreams of goals. He thinks of goals. Hopefully he can keep producing them for us this season. Then we've promoted Robert Bulls from the youth team. Lacks a bit of determination as well, but he's fast. He knows how to dribble, doesn't really know how to shoot, but sometimes it appears that you don't need this on this level. Decent work rate, decent technique. And then we've signed this guy. Our biggest signing money-wise, 250k cost us. He is a fast striker with good dribbling. Nice determination, nice work rate, nice teamwork. I think he can settle in fine in a season or two. 121 cap for Austria as well. And then finally, we have Pascal Bayer, who is decent. He's a decent backup option. So I think this is a fairly well-rounded team. Nice quality. I hope that we can look up in the table. Things have not really looked like that for the first couple of games. I left you after the Würzburg win, and then we lost... Disappointingly to Heidenheim, we were up 2-1 when Mari Mandzukic got sent off. And then they turned it around with the goals in the 74th, 86th and 91st minute. Disappointing. Then we had an easy game against the Ziegen in the DFB Pokal. They are a non-league team. We played an entirely rotated team. Aymar Scher got two goals and youngster Robert Puls got a hat-trick. Absolutely lovely. And I thought that maybe we can come in with a better showing against Braunschweig but this was another disappointing loss 
They took the lead, we managed to claw back, and then they scored on a header after a set piece. Mm. It's a tight game, we were the slightly better team, but we lost. I feel like we might be a bit static when it comes to tactics, so I made a couple of changes. I don't know if you remember, but we used a fairly straightforward 442, and now I'm trying to get a bit more movement in here. I have made the left winger into an inverted winger to get him to come into this area here, and I made the former supporting fullback into a complete wing back to go up and down the flank. And I'm trying an inverted wing back to support the central midfield. We are shorting passes down slightly by keeping the pretty high tempo and we will see what this gets us. Today is an important game as we play against San Pauli, our fierce rivals. And this is the team that we are going with. Bazunu in goal. Bayreuta running up and down the flank, getting some crosses in. Paulsen, experienced Dane, together with young, solid Andy Coburn. Alexander Jallo out on the right, because we are playing the other option, Petro Moraes, up on the right wing. Nice crossing there as well. We're switching these, these guys around. There we go. Kevin Walker is the box-to-box -box midfielder, and Blazer is the creator. Omladic, hopefully he can work a bit of magic there in a more free role. And then we have Mansukic coming in. You all know him, he doesn't need too much of an introduction. And then we have Usman Mane. Okay, so we go into the game. Wish me luck. Let's see how this newly devised or newly tweaked tactics works for us. Hopefully we can have a bit more possession and... Uh, Create a few more chances. If this doesn't work, then we'll simply revert back to the more classic 4-4-2. Not a lot happening so far. We are kind of feeling our way into this game. Not a single highlight, even though we've had the slightly stat advantage. Here they come. Can we win this or will it be a St. Pauli highlight? Pyroita, Omladic, what can we do here? Blesser picks it up. Okay, they are tied there. Kind of looked like they were standing on each other, that inverted back. Oh, that's a nice shot. The inverted wing back and the box to box midfielder were kind of occupying the same space. That might be something to consider. Or at least we had a highlight. Okay, we're going to half time and it's been a pretty drab performance so far. Of course I'm going to tell them I'm not happy. They love that. We are making a change to this guy. Let's see what happens if we change it to central midfielder on attack. If he can get a little higher up the pitch so that the inverted wing back and the central midfielder doesn't stand on each other. Here we go for the second half. We struggled against San Paulo last season. Two draws. Hopefully we can pick out a win here. That would be absolutely lovely. This feels like a ball we could win. Blazer finds Omladic. Can you get the ball into the box, my friend? Walker, Jello, Mane. We are passing it around. Hit the post. Mm. We hit the post. Oh, I would have loved for that one to go in. By de Blazer. Are they turning around? Uh, oh, are they countering on us? Can we stop this one? Olson, a Swede playing against us, not for us, goes through, but Bazunu just picks that up like a fallen apple. Omridic is tied, we're getting him off. We bring in Amel Mujanic. Are we making any more changes at the moment? No, I don't think so. These guys will get the chance to play. For a little longer. Still not a lot happening. Can we have one more highlight? Let's get slightly more 
attacking and see if that makes any changes for us. Final 10 minutes. Nothing happening. Let's go even more attacking. I really want that win. Can we get anyone more off? Let's get Imar Share in. And let's give Hamp a couple of minutes. There we go for the final minutes. It's a highlight. Will it be ours or will they counter on us? Win this ball. Win this ball. Uh, oh, here they come. Please don't score. Nice, Bazunu. Thank you. Thank you for the save. Maybe we can power through here. Let's hope so. Get them on way. Can we counter on them? They keep the ball. They keep the ball. There we go. Final few minutes. Doesn't appear that much will happen. Okay, a bit of a disappointment. The new tweak didn't really do what I wanted it to do. I'm far from pleased, actually. This means that we stay towards the bottom of the middle of the pack. Four points in four games is perhaps what was expected of us, but Sly, of course, not what Herr Rolf wanted. We have a couple of tough games coming up. Holstein Kiel, the first place team away. Goethe Firth. Kaiserslautern, they are 6th, Wiesbaden, and we got Hamburger Sportverein in the DFB Pokal. Maybe I'll come back for this game, or maybe I'll come back for a league game before that. But until then, I want to thank you for coming on this journey with me. I hope you have as much fun as I have, and I will see you soon. Bye. Hi, McLean UFM here, under my infamous flight of stairs. I really appreciate that you took the time to watch this episode that I had a lot of fun recording. I hope that you liked it and if you did I'd appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and gave me a thumbs up because that helps me out a lot. Uh, there are new episodes out on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and then we also have the occasional stream on Twitch on Tuesdays or Thursdays and during the weekend I have sort of a weekly summary uh, blog post coming out. Uh, I know it's an ambitious project but I'm having a lot of fun with it and I hope that you will too. Links are in the description and on michelinofm.com if you want more information and before I leave you I have a few words to say. You are appreciated, you are beautiful and have a good day. Until I see you next time, auf Wiedersehen!